Uh, morning. Um, just uh, first want to thank everybody for um, uh, coming out to Media Day. Um, before I uh, uh, take any questions, just have a couple things I just want to say, um, and um, then I'll be happy to answer anything that you do want to ask. Uh, first, I just I, I want to make sure that um, we recognize our, our ownership, obviously our ownership group led by Clay Bennett, and, and there's several other people involved that um, are tremendous uh, individuals and uh, citizens of Oklahoma City as well. Um, you know, uh, the last uh, summer like this or um, opportunities like this really are, uh, you know, only ideas and opportunities unless, you know, we're given the opportunity and the support uh, to execute on those. And, um, uh, you know, I just, I can't say enough about the group as a whole and what a pleasure it is to, to, um, to work with them. And um, the other thing I think I just want to add about them is this: uh, it's a great group of people, but they're also incredibly uh, humble people. Uh, our ownership group, uh, and for that group of guys uh, to be from Oklahoma City, uh, to get along the way that they do, um, to um, support us as they do, there's just no egos in the group, and um, I think it's one of the reasons why. Uh, I think it's a huge reason for the ability for us to sustain the level of performance that we've had since uh, 2008 going into this is our 10th anniversary. Um, uh, the other thing I just want to add about that group of guys that we've all had the pleasure of, of, uh, of working for is they're incredibly passionate uh, as an ownership group about basketball in Oklahoma City. They're incredibly passionate about uh, the Thunder. Um, and they're incredibly passionate about Oklahoma City uh, as a city, as a place, as a home, uh, as a thriving um, uh, community. Uh, but at the same time, they balance that with a tremendous amount of respect for our players. Uh, they respect their craftsmanship. They respect their space. They care about them as individuals. They care about their families. Um, and um, they create a great environment for our players to, to work because they know that they have the things they need to be successful, but they also don't have... Um, uh, a lot of distractions, and um, I think that takes a lot of humility for, for, for an ownership group to operate that way. Um, with you know, moving on, obviously, to uh, to the the trade um, with respect to Carmelo, um, an incredible opportunity for us and a rare one uh, to add a player like like this. Um, I, I think the best word to describe him is describe him as dynamic. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> offensively there's some things about him that are different and that um, I think could be really special with our group in particular. One, um, you know, his ability to stretch the floor as a catch and shoot, three point shooter, regardless of uh, corner or non corner threes. Um, he's over 40% in both of those areas over a period of time. Um, and, uh, you know, he also shoots an extraordinarily high percentage on uncontested ones, um, which hopefully with the with the group that we have, um, he, he'll be the beneficiary of some 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 open opportunities or more open opportunities than he's had. I also think Billy, uh, you know, with with respect to a player like Carmelo, will be exceptional in terms of putting him in positions uh, to experience new things, um, to uh, move him around, and, and Billy is really excited about this opportunity because he really feels like Carmelo is somebody that uh, is a really underrated passer um, and also a guy that gets the free throw line at a really high rate, um, but also, as I said before, is a guy that's an exceptional catch and shoot three point shooter and just gives us another opportunity, another player that we can play in different spots. And I think that's one of Billy's greatest strengths is just, you know, utilizing the, the, the flexibility of the team and, and thinking creativ creatively. Uh, so we're really excited about that. The other thing I just want to add about him and that I've admired for a very long time. Um, is just his professionalism and the way he carries himself and everyone in Oklahoma City will have an opportunity to to meet him and get to know him um, but from afar uh, you know he he has a very he's 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 a rather dignified guy in my opinion the way he uh, conducts his business um, the relationships he has around the NBA and the respect that he garners from um, many different people, from owners to referees to executives and, and obviously players as well. Uh, he's, you know, he's had a, uh, we all know it's been a, a challenging uh, situation for him. 
um, and you know those things type those types of things happen. Um, but I thought he handled it the best way he could, and that was another reason why, in speaking to a lot of people that know him and know him well, um, we really felt like he would not only be a really good fit for our team, but I think you know he carries himself with a professionalism and a class that um, as a Thunder going to our tenth year, we, we want that to continue to be a hallmark of our organization. Um, so with that, I'll, I'd open it up to any questions. Uh, Sam, you talked about on Friday how it was a, a risk not to take uh, a chance to get Paul George. Do you feel that it was the same way with uh, Carmelo? Um, that's a great question, Mike. I, you know, I, I don't, I didn't think about it in those terms um, with Paul George. I, I did. I think, um, I think in this case, I think it was mostly opportunity. Um, you know, obviously it. Um, it doesn't come around very often that the ten-time All-Star is is um, available, and then it's unique in the sense that it, he had a the clause in his contract where he could he could choose the place to go. So um, I think opportunistically, the the ability to you know make the trade to be in the position to to be on the list of teams, and then as I said to open the press conference to to be given the ability to be aggressive by Clay and the other um, members of the ownership group. I mean that, um, you know, that's what takes ideas uh, or theory and to, you know and turns it into actual practice. And um, I, I look at it being like opportunistic. To me, um, the the risk I, I don't see it as much of a risk because of the team that we have in place and the way he complements the team. Um, it's, it's just kind of where we are in terms of the life cycle of the organization. And the last thing I'd add is, you know, we, we've been at this for 10 years now uh, in Oklahoma City, and we've had a, 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 you know, it's been an up and down experience, but I think it's been an incredible ride for all of us to be on and a lot of success that we've had. Uh, and the ability to find a way to sustain that, you know, beyond the, the kind of the commonplace team cycle in today's NBA is, is about three years of high performance and you know if we can capture that and, and elongate it even further than we have with a with a, a trade like this um, you know I, I think it's a, a great thing for the city a great thing for the fans um, and a great thing for our for our players and coaches so Chris Lincoln from the sports scene here with your old buddy coach Ted Owens <laughs> real quickly uh, how did Carmelo come to get on the radar of the Oklahoma City Thunder in terms of teams they'd accept the trade for. Any update on all the uh, Dwayne Wade rumors? Oh, sure. Okay, so first, first part of your uh, question. Um, you know, it, it's a, a unique situation when, you're, when a player has that um, uh, ability. So it's kind of a, you're, you're kind of just kind of waiting and seeing. Obviously, you're preparing. Um, quite frankly, you know, you, we've prepared every offseason exactly the same way that we for this offseason and sometimes things um, you know break in a, in a good way and sometimes they go against you and we've been kind of fortunate obviously that some of the things that we prepared for have, have worked out um, but um, we got informed you know by the Knicks that this was a potential opportunity and, um, and from that point we were able to engage um, you know I don't want to get into how how or when the conversations picked up but um, you know our job is to be in touch with all the teams all the time to have a pulse on what's taking place and and, and you know fortunately for us um, you know we've we've been benefited by having good relationships with different people um, and um, we have a lot of different people that uh, we lean on to to have those conversations et cetera et cetera and I feel like we had a good pulse on what was going on with New York um, but um, until you're on the list it doesn't make a difference if you can make a deal or not so once that happened we we engaged. Um, Scott Perry and I uh, worked together in Seattle for a year um, and have been close friends for 15 years or so. Um, so we talk a lot, but the conversations, uh, you know, specifically about this deal, you know, didn't really pick up until we got on the list. Uh, second question, sorry, uh, Dwayne Wade. You know, um, as I said before, we try to prepare for uh, as many situations as possible. We know that these types of buyout situations are possible. A lot of times with buyouts, the um, – there's, a, there's kind of an idea in advance of where the player might be leaning toward or going to. Um, you know, that remains to be seen, but, um, you know, he'll go through the process and, and um, we'll be in touch with those people just like the rest of the league. Uh, anytime there's an opportunity 
uh, to make the team better uh, since 2008, or I guess really uh, yeah, I, since 2008, you know, we've tried to put ourselves in position to, to capitalize, at least know what's going on, but that doesn't mean that we're going to do anything. We just want to kind of understand what's taking place. And in this business, sometimes things are, are, are decided in advance, believe it or not. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. Sam, understanding that, that it's, it's early, obviously, but to what degree have there been discussions with Melo just about positions and power forward versus small forward and where he'll be used and that sort sure, of thing? Sure, I mean, those are conversations primarily that, you know, Billy will have with him. Um, and um, I, I'm sure that those conversations will, you know, continue to evolve in the, in the coming days. But um, I think that the way that he impacts the team as a catch-and-shoot player, you know, figuring out how we do that, uh, and then also not getting away from the things that he does exceptionally well, which is, you know, play with the ball in his hands. And um, I know Billy and his staff have been, you know, hard at work at figuring out how to play to everybody's strengths. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, we talked about this morning, that, you know, uh, the same things win. You know, I, I said this the other day, like whether you're playing in high school, college, junior college, the NBA, like there's certain truths in, 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 in basketball that have to be, fundamentally executed on a, on a day-to-day -day basis before you can worry about, um, you know, the, the, uh, the intricacies and the tactics. And, um, you know, we'll have to start working on those things tomorrow. You know, it, it's not something that um, comes together quickly and you definitely can't skip steps. And as I said, I'll just reiterate again, like, I can write the stories for all of you, you know, the first time that uh, we look uh, sloppy or we drop a game here or there or, we're, you know, we're working things through. Um, you know, that's natural, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say you guys shouldn't, you know, react that way. But the vision for our team and the way we've gone about our business is always to think, see things for what they can be and not for what they are. And I think we'll know what we can be, you know, after 82 games. And, um, you know, we'll focus on, you know, what we can control to get to the end game uh, starting tomorrow. Yeah, Sam, uh, you talk about Billy preparing for this season. Did he have two plans going, one with Carmelo, one without? I mean, it seems like a big difference whether you have him or not. Yeah, um, well, you know, as I said before, uh, the, uh, the opportunity to, to acquire a player like this and, um, doesn't happen quickly. So it, it's not like, um, you know, you guys know I'm from New England, so it's not one if by land, two if by sea as much as I'd like to believe that everything, you know, goes back to uh, Paul Revere and uh, Concord, Massachusetts. Um, but um, I think that uh, he, he reacts, you know, when once we have a player like that in place, you know, there's an infinite amount of, op, you know, possibilities that could take place. But I think what makes Billy really good is he focuses on, you know, what he has, uh, how to, you know, create the best version of that. Um, and one of the reasons, when, you know, once I remember sitting up here uh, with him when we introduced him as the coach in this room, and a lot of questions, you know, were posed to me is like, well, what were the criteria, the things that you thought were important? And one of the things that I thought was really important, and why I thought he would be a great coach for us, was, you know, he's shown that he he's evolved and continues to adapt. He's very curious. Um, you know, he has a creativity. Uh, he has a lot of the the in the. Um, uh, criteria or qualities of like a high performance person regardless if they're um, you know coaching basketball or doing something else and so one of those things is adapt adaptability and curiosity and I think that's a huge strength of his that he hasn't just held on to the things that have worked but he's been willing to you know uh, push the limits be creative and, and and go through some of the, the the messiness that gets you know it's a kind of a requirement for making progress and so uh, I think we'll see some of that I hope we see some of that, to be honest with you. I hope we see some uh, stretching. I hope we see some things that you know, we didn't think about uh, or haven't thought about yet, because that's the only way I think you can break through and, and continue to make progress versus just you know, stay, stay, you know, stay in the lane. Sometimes you've got you, you know, you, to be willing to, to go through some of the creative process in order to get the benefit of progress. I think he'll do that. Thank you, Sam. All right. Thank you, guys.